Coming up on Here's the Truth with Georgia Ford. A tale of two murder cases nearly three decades apart with similar cries for justice. We thought our fight was over, but I feel like it's just beginning. How two families are continuing their search for answers. And we reveal the inspiration behind Resma Menakim's new book, Monsters in Love. We have a life to embrace warmly, brilliant visions to give color to. Plus, buckle up for a joyride with spoken word artist Miss Mari. Here's the truth starts right now. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm independent journalist Georgia Ford. We begin with two families picking up the pieces after suffering the unimaginable a mother being killed. And even with each case being nearly three decades apart, the cries for justice remain the same. It, it, it's a lot. Um, I wish I could just hold my mom and hug her and tell her that I love her. I wish I could do The remnants of an unsolved murder case still in the hearts of a Twin Cities family. I cherish life um, because of this experience. One of the hardest parts for me was having to tell my grandmother and the doctors had to give her um, tranquilizers to stabilize her heart so that we could walk in the room and tell her that here's another child she's lost due to murder. Dee and Deandra are the daughters of Cassandra Willis, a woman who was killed back in 1996. My mom was love. My mom was sunshine, you know, as you see in her pictures. Her smile was huge. You know, um, and that smile just radiated from my heart. Investigators found Cassandra's body badly beaten, wrapped in a sheet of blankets, and dragged into a storage closet of a South Minneapolis high-rise apartment building. And so they allowed a few of our family members, we had a few pastors in our family, to come and view only a picture of just her face with a sheet around the rest, because that's how bad she had been beaten and all the things that they did to her. They brutally murdered our mom. Cassandra's body was decomposed. Officials believe the 36-year-old died a few days before her body was discovered. We were um, robbed from burying her the way she wanted to be buried. Like They literally had to peel the sheets from her. And those that's what we have to remember as 15 and 19, you know. Um, we couldn't, we couldn't give a open casket funeral. They tell us Pumpkin, Cassandra's family nickname, was a beautician, often seen wearing purple, her favorite color. And she was just that, a pumpkin. I miss her heartbeat. That was my favorite thing, to lay on her chest and just hear her heartbeat. Nearly three decades later, police still have not found the person responsible. This is something that impacts a family for generations. So it is my prayer that Minneapolis Police Department, specifically for my mom's case, just take a thorough look and not just brush it off, not just, oh, it's a 27-year-old case. The sisters believe Minneapolis police largely ignored their mother's death and dragged their feet in the investigation. So we went and we started investigating. We started um, getting names of people who were on the floors, who lit, who my mom friends were in that building, and we started knocking on everybody's door. Leaving them with more questions than answers and the burden of doing their own digging. Everything is in this book. Here are so many conversations with different people, interviews that we did with each person. We typed them up. So many details. If you read some of this stuff, they're telling you what happened the last time they seen my mom. Their persistence led to MPD re-examining the case in 2011. Our producers requested a copy of the findings but have not heard back. And then as we had the um, investigation reopened, we learned that they never even tested her DNA. There was DNA, but they never tested it. It just felt like she they treated her like she was just another number, like she didn't matter. What well, she really did. It's not fair that you guys didn't, you know, put in enough effort to solve her case. How did we come up with all of these answers and we're not the police? Make that make sense. A story that parallels the case of a young mother killed back in November. We thought our fight was over, but I feel like it's just beginning. 
Tiffany is the sister of Zaria McKeever, the woman who was killed by two teen suspects during a home invasion, according to police. It's just a long process. Um, we haven't really even had time to grieve yet. The two teens were offered plea deals by Hennepin County attorney Mary Morarty that would have only put them in a juvenile detention center for two years. Three others were charged in connection to Zaria's murder. I just want the judge to really reject the plea and like it to be looked at by the um, attorney general's office and altered or even thrown out whatever they decide because um, like Keith Ellison said, the two-year plea is too lenient and it's the same as his brother. And if his brother wasn't the shooter, then why are they getting the same plea? According to a statement by the Hennepin County attorney, she doubled down on the initial juvenile sentence, saying it's the best chance at accountability while preserving public safety. Like she's not looking out for their best interests or public safety. And um, it's, it's just really hard just to think that you know, like you have all this evidence and you just like let it slip away. And it's just really like, it's crazy, it's crazy. We took into consideration every all of the information that we had, including the fact that he was manipulated by an adult whom we are prosecuting uh, aggressively, or we would have prosecuted aggressively had the case not been taken away from us. Governor Tim Wall stepped in to appoint Attorney General Keith Ellison to the case after Tiffany and her family requested state officials intervene. It's hard to have faith in the system at all, but I do have a better hope now that it's in someone else's hands. I think the pleas would have just been accepted if we were a quiet family, if we just would have lied down and, take and took what was offered. But um, you got to fight for what's right. And the plea was not right, so we're just trying to get it thrown out. The 15-year-old who investigators believe pulled the trigger is still on trial. But as for the other suspect, his deal has already been signed by a judge, and he'll serve two years for the crime. It was just a lot of things that was um, violating our victims' rights, so we just didn't trust them to even handle this case with care. They're, they're supposed to be for the victims. They're supposed to be like for the victim's family. And um, she's forgetting like my sister had a daughter that she left behind and she's the victim. The Willis sisters believe the way law enforcement is handling both cases is no coincidence. It, it's, it's systemic. It's been systemic. When you think of other people as less than or um, not worthy or, or worth the time or the effort to have these investigations done thoroughly, in a thorough manner, um, then that's when we get the outcomes that we're getting. It's, it's a big problem and that's why um, I, I'm trying to work on something. I'm trying to get a law passed or something like in honor of my sister to protect women. No justice for punk and no peace. No justice for punk and no peace. In the midst of their cries for justice, the families want the public to remember that both Cassandra and Zaria were loved. Just beautiful, happy. She was just a loving, caring person, just super sweet and nice to anybody that ever crossed her path. Like, she was really, really a good person. <laughs> That's why it's so hard to believe that this even happened to her. She always lets us know that she's all around us. Um, whether it's a smell or a song or, you know, just a little different. A heart and a candle she found one year, you know, um, just a little different ways. And we're like, okay, we see you, lady. <laughs> so she uh, will forever be with us. So as you can see, we're not giving up. Until I take my last breath, I will fight for justice for my mom because I feel like our family deserves the closure. And at the end of the day, she was loved and she was somebody. She deserves to have justice. Turning now to a story that's developing. The family of a black teenager shot in the head by an elderly white homeowner says he's home and recovering. Kansas City authorities say it happened last week when 16-year-old Ralph Yarl rung the wrong doorbell. According to the family attorneys, Ralph has returned home from the hospital but faces a long journey to fully heal. Ralph is a high school junior, a band leader, and plays bass clarinet. You hear these stories about racism in America and you think, 
wow, how sad is that? But then you have this little bit of hope because you feel like it's so far away and it would never happen to your family. It would never happen to you. I cannot believe this is the country that we live in. This is the country. This is America. Many have taken to social media and to the streets in protests, including one held by hundreds of his classmates who walked out of the class this week in solidarity. 84-year-old Andrew Lester has been charged with first-degree assault and armed criminal activity, both felonies he could face a lifetime sentence if convicted. Still ahead, the inspiration behind Resma Menakim's new book, Monsters in Love. I see this book, I see this book as a healing book. And how the local New York Times bestselling author is leaving a legacy of healing. Plus, buckle up for a joyride with spoken word artist Miss Mari. I'm ready to, to really be like in the city with it, you know? Yeah. Beyond just my college campus. I'm in the city. Man. I'm in the city. I'm in the campus, <laughs> okay? We popping out. We popping out. We in the streets <laughs> out Roof. From food and fashion to books and art, there's something for everyone at the black market. So come visit on the second Saturday of the month from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. to experience the best of what black businesses have to offer. Visit the black market today and show your support for black businesses and culture. Black business is beautiful at the black market. Kobe Co. creates the scents and sounds for restorative self-care. From burned out to calm and lit, we hand pour each soy-based candle and create a playlist to match because we believe self-care is a whole vibe. Light, listen, and vibe. Shop our products at lovekobeco.com. Welcome to Tehavan. Thank, oh, thank you. you. We pride ourselves on using the freshest ingredients just like our abuelitas used to. From our signature birria tacos to our fresh guacamole, there's something for everyone at El Tejavan. Don't forget to try our, our famous margaritas made from the freshest juices and best tequilas. Join us at El Tejavan and experience our Mexican restaurant. There are times where you literally, if you're in a long-term relationship, you literally hate your partner. You better have some resource that you can tap into in order to keep moving through that. When we think of love in romantic relationships, we often focus on the butterflies and roses, but relationships also require conflict resolution and healing. Resma Menakim, a psychotherapist and New York Times bestselling author, is encouraging partners to do just that in his new book, Monsters in Love. Resource and joy is the primary energy. Trauma is not primary. Trauma thwarts that energy. Former KMOJ radio host Resma Menakim. Before we experienced COVID-19, we experienced COVID-1619 is now a nationally recognized psychotherapist, healing expert, and New York Times bestselling author. My dear brother, Resma Minikim, has written a brilliant book called My Grandmother's Hands. My Grandmother's Hands and the Quaking of America are Resma's two previous books about navigating the nation's racial reckoning and mending the trauma in our bodies. I kind of see that work um, as um, something that continues to kind of evolve and emerge. Now he's shifting the conversation to intimate relationships. This one was more of like in the house, couples, how, how relationships actually function. And so I really do see my work as trying to hit pieces that people are, um, are really grappling with. His new book, Monsters in Love, provides conflict resolution tools for those in long-term relationships. I get a lot of people contacting me and saying, man, I knew this was happening, right? I knew it, was, I knew it wasn't just about compatibility. You have to figure out different ways of being with each other or not being with each other. And those things don't necessarily mean that you're incompatible. Right? It just means that the, that the part of the relationship in terms of uh, uh, 
the fuzzies and being in love with each other and date night no longer work anymore because you're not the same person. And most books that talk about couples work are usually using white couples as a standard. And what I wanted to do with this book was give people different understandings of the couple's configurations as well as um, different types of couples so, so people could see themselves in the book. Resma's Monsters in Love is available on Amazon and other major online book retailers. If you're in a long-term relationship or you think you're gonna be in a long-term relationship or you're moving towards a long-term relationship, um, this book is for you. Why Monsters in Love? <laughs> because we monsters. I didn't want to call it Butterflies in Love or, or, or Hummingbird in Love. I wanted to call it Monsters in Love because I think when we're in long-term relationships and we get up against ourselves, that's exactly what's on display. Each chapter challenges the idea that conflict between partners is unhealthy or something to avoid. There are times where you literally, if you're in a long-term relationship, you literally hate your partner. You hate your partner. This is not dislike, you hate your partner. You better have some resource that you can tap into in order to keep moving through that. And it encourages individuals to stand by what they need without competitiveness or vengefulness. The reality is love is being malleable. Love is being flexible. Love is really, how do I work with this person that means the most to me, right? And maintain some sense of who I am at the same time. How do I do that? And to me, that's love. Do you see this book as a tool to help heal the black family unit? Absolutely. I see this book, I see this book as a healing book. A healing book that Resma warns should be read alone. Don't read this book with your partner. <laughs> get your partner their own book and you get your own book. Don't, don't read it together and do all that. It, 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 that will create arguments and fights in ways that you don't need to. I think that this book is a very important book in understanding the function of relationships. And to that, I think it will aid black, black families, and, uh, uh, but all families. I wanted to write a book that actually pulled that into context and, and help people work with it as opposed to thinking that something must be horribly wrong with me or my partner or our configuration. It's a guide to self-development that Resma hopes will heal the nation, one couple at a time. It's part of the legacy of Resma, right? It's part of the legacy of somatic abolition. It's part of the legacy of liberation. I don't, there's nothing that I write that I don't believe is part of the liberatory pieces that, um, that our people need. Biggest takeaway that you want people to have from this book? You're not defective. The biggest takeaway of, of that book is you're not defective. That what you think is actually happening in relationships, the things that you've known that you haven't been able to articulate are actually true. Coming up after the break, we go on a joyride with spoken word artist, Miss Mari. And there ain't a living soul on this planet who can set limitations I myself have not conceived. It is not enough. Are you not confident in your smile? Well, we have a plan for you. Here at Code White Teeth Whitening, we are here to help you reach your smile goals. We're offering up to 70% off your commitment. Now that's something to smile about. Book your session today at CodeWhiteSmile.com and always remember to keep smiling. Are you ready to get in the best shape of your life? At Sir Boxing Club, we offer high intensity workouts that will push you to your limits and help you reach your fitness goals. Our gym is equipped with state of the art equipment and a family atmosphere. Experienced trainers will guide you every step of the way, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned fighter. Come join us today and start your journey towards a stronger, healthier you. To me, public functionary is the future. I think just this like rootedness in really early career artists, in emerging practices and emerging artists, it's sort of like this future looking moment. Public functionary to me has always been about artist support and providing opportunity and resources to artists, particularly artists who haven't had access to those opportunities in the past. Public functionary is the place where you really can plant your ideas and, and watch them grow. That's public functionary. It's like in the now, but it's really investing in where we're gonna be in five years and 10 years.
Black owned businesses are vital for our community and our economy. Black Business Enterprises serves as an educational and resource hub for black owned businesses all around the country. We have grants available, one on one consulting, seminars on finances, how to manage your businesses, QuickBooks. I, I want people to understand that they're superheroes. They can do it all. They can, period. To learn more, visit blackbusinessenterprises.org. Joyride is sponsored by Nail Partners. Black reminds me it was here before it all began, and it will be here when it all ends. That's why Black does not crack, and Black does not bend. A spoken word artist pouring into the mind and spirit of many at open mics across the Twin Cities. In this week's Joyride, Miss Mari shares the story behind her poetry and shows us how she's uplifting our culture, one performance at a time. So cool. you actually were a student at Hamlin. Yes. Why yes. is this school still so significant to you? This school was where I actually discovered poetry being a, a legitimate pursuit for somebody. It was where I first like touched a stage again, like wow. after after taking you know a five six year hiatus between graduating high school and then nearing the end of my college career. It just reaffirmed that this was something I was good at. Yeah. That this was something that like I was um, comfortable doing again. That I like enjoyed my own work enough to share with others, I wanted to then identify like, all right, yeah, I'm ready to, to really be like in the city with it, you know? Yeah. Beyond just my college campus. I'm in the city. I'm in the city, I'm in Minneapolis, okay? We popping out. We popping out, we in the streets now, no, just like. I am everything and everything is me. And there ain't a living soul on this planet who can set limitations I myself have not conceived. It is not enough. Are there any artists who you would say have inspired you artistically? Kendrick Lamar is like my, my biggest inspiration. So cool. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like I could go on and on about him. I also heard that you love Maya Angelou oh, and Nikki yeah. Giovanni. Oh yeah, the queens. What? The queens, the matriarchs. Yes, yes. The way they write feels like prayers like it feels like it feels like something so intimate that like almost was inscribed inside of you and somehow yes. they're writing about Phenomenal it too woman. you know That's like me. that how do you like <laughs> that is incredible one like fun and kind of like anxiety inducing experience that's been happening lately is like people will recognize me from something off the internet, but I'll have to ask them like, what exactly was it? Was it poetry? Was right. it right. was it a video? What, what was it? Hallucination, baby. Cool because it's like all right, I'm having I'm existing in different worlds for people. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, I, I, That's exciting. I'm not alone in being multidimensional, and I know there's so many people in the Twin Cities who are just like that. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I encourage all anybody who watches this to to be as as diverse as they as they want to be with their talents. Yes. Although I feel like you lead with your spoken words, mm -hmm. some of your pieces do feel like raps. Yeah, a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank wait, you. Okay, get it, mama. It's not intentional, but I'm glad that it does come across that way because I am ex ex extremely, like, extremely um, influenced by hip hop. Really? For sure. Oh, really. Hey, roll me up a backwood again. I'm good again. Fempe Tile style. Had them ready for the bitter end. But now we friends. I'm a lot to cover. Now they want to talk. So Tangible Collective here yeah. in the Northrop King building mm -hmm. played an instrumental role in yeah. your self-discovery as an artist. And after college, it was kind of hard to find footing of like where could I perform again, yeah. you know, without a network really anymore. And um, Tangible Collective provided a platform for artists to showcase their work in a, in a space that was safe, comfortable. The audience looked just like you so when they responded like it felt like it was it was affirming in a way that's like almost with family you know what i mm -hmm. mean and um they zania and ricky um they're they're the two founders of, of that organization I know zania. yeah shout out to zania <laughs> um, they just had the right instincts and and the the wherewithal and the skill sets of knowing how to bring something like that together, have the consistency so that people could uh, really work on their craft and build curating and supporting local artists to make to make sure that they are that we all meet our highest selves basically on stage. Well, not to put you on the spot, but would love to hear some of your work. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, okay, um, let's see. Black don't crack. Black don't, don't bend. Black knows how to begin again. You know what the morning is like after the world ends. We know what mourning is like when grief spans generations. How the fruits of our labor always tasted quite bitter. Knowing that our blood fertilized the soil. Knowing how tears, sweat, and water don't differ. 
black points to a home I've never been before, shows me how my fingerprints are part of the blueprint, the lines in my hands drawn in the sand. Black reminds me it was here before it all began, and it will be here when it all ends. That's why black does not crack, and black does not bend. <laughs> Yay! I thank you. To my soul. Thank you. That's the point. That's the point. I appreciate I you. Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Today's Joyride is sponsored by Nail Partners, bringing a renewed approach to commercial real estate and urban planning. Thanks so much for watching Here's the Truth. For extended versions of these stories and more, head over to georgiafort.com. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Saturday at 11. Coming up next week on Here's the Truth, we hear from community as city officials start planning the future of the third precinct. And we go inside a recording studio where the power of music is transforming tomorrow's stars. Because I, I do have bad faith, right? But I'm able to sing in front of them and actually feel like I sound good. Plus, buckle up for a joy ride with Daniel the Violinist. <laughs> Watch Here's the Truth, Saturdays at 11 a.m. on the CW Twin Cities. Art is impactful, intentional, and beautiful. We started showcasing our art together in 2018. The Tipton Hammond Studio is a reflection of the love we have for each other. More than just a gallery. Here, we celebrate the creativity in us all. This is Tipton Hammond Arts. Part-time job, full-time hustle, all-time Shiro to all of us. It's time for you, our Shiro, to stretch for the stars. A free online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org.